Hi everyone, this is Kev from Caribbean Crypto Team. Now I am a little excited about today's video because if you know me and you've been following my channel, you do know that I love a good unboxing video. You'd have seen me unbox my Keep Key Hardware Wallet, my Ledger Nano X, but now I have a new hardware wallet courtesy of those persons at Exodus. So I want to thank Exodus for sponsoring today's video and for today's video I'll be unboxing the Trezor Model T hardware wallet. Now for those of you who don't know what Exodus is, Exodus is a premium software wallet that I always recommend new persons to the space to go and download because of its ease of use and clean interface. Now, the wallet supports a number of cryptocurrencies and best of all, since they are partnered with Trezor, the wallet works perfectly with your Trezor hardware wallet. Now, the Trezor Model T is one of the premium hardware wallets that you will see many reviewers discussing over here on YouTube that and a Ledger Nano X so in this video I'm going to show you both how to unbox set up the hardware wallet and also connect it to your Exodus desktop account so let's jump right in with the unboxing experience so this is what the packaging should look like when your treasure device arrives I recommend you read all the information on the back of the box Now once you remove the plastic, you simply slide off the cover and you're greeted with your Trezor Model T along with the words, the safe place for your coins. Now to open the box, there's an elegantly designed magnetic latch at the front. You are given some basic instructions here on the cover, connect your Trezor, Go to the website treasure.io slash start and follow the instructions. Now this is what the device itself should look like. It is very light and comparable to the Ledger Nano S. Now let's see what else we have in the package. Now this seems to be some kind of magnetic pad. Maybe you want to stick the treasure to your desk for easy access or any other flat surface. Now let's see what's in the box. I believe these should be our cables and stickers and documentation. The cable itself is a USB A to a USB type C and you have a few stickers. Now the box is empty. You can see the last set of instructions about the magnetic dock that I would have showed you earlier. And if you have any issues, you can always contact their support. So that is pretty much everything in the box. And along with the Trezor, I also was able to get a silicone case as well as a privacy screen protector, which I will put on later. So I know this is what you have in the box. You have your stickers and you have your device. These are some extras that I would have bought. In the box itself, you have two papers that you can use to write on your personal recovery seeds. And finally, you have your OTG cable and that's pretty much it. Now, one thing I want you guys to make sure is that your treasure device has this holographic seal. You have to make sure the seal comes intact and when you go to peel it away, Just bear in mind that there's going to be some residue left on your device, but there's nothing you can do about that. So that pretty much covers the full unboxing experience. Hope you guys enjoyed. All that's left to do now is to put on my privacy screen and case. The case does fit snugly to your device and has a good grip while leaving the main port exposed. But one thing to mention is that it does block this micro SD card port but that is usually used by more advanced users all that's left now to do is to set her up when setting up a new Trezor device the first thing you want to do is head over to the website trezor.io slash start now in the past the primary means of accessing your Trezor hardware wallet was by using the web portal 
It is still accessible here in the top right hand corner of the screen, but since then, Trezor has released a desktop app for both Mac and PC. Now it is this desktop app that I will be showing you guys today. This app also allows you to buy, exchange and send your various cryptocurrency assets and it has support for a variety of cryptocurrencies and tokens. So let's go to download the app. Now installation on the Mac is pretty straightforward. After the package file has been downloaded, all you have to do is click on it and drag the actual icon to the applications folder and it is installed on your computer. Now when you open the app for the first time, this is what you should see. Bear in mind, my Trezor is already plugged into my computer. And the first thing that they ask is if you would like to allow this service to collect any anonymous data about the usage. I have mine set as off for now, I'm going to click confirm and now we have a security check. Now the first thing they want you to confirm is if the holographic tab proof sticker on the Trezor is intact. And given that mine was so hard to come off, I would say that is a yes. And of course I bought it from an official Trezor store and it wasn't tampered with to my knowledge at customs. Now we're on to installing the firmware. Your Trezor is shipped without any firmware so you can install the latest version directly by clicking the button below. Now I do expect this step to take a few minutes and I'll show you what it looks like on the device itself. Now once it's complete, all I have to do is click on continue and now I'm asked to create either a new wallet or restore one from backup. In this case, I'm going to click create a new wallet. I have an option between a standard one or a Shamir share backup. In this case, I'm going to click a standard seed backup. And now I have to confirm on my Trezor device. Now at this stage, I would recommend you go and get a pen and paper ready. You can use the little pamphlet that they gave you in the box provided. Once you click create backup, you are told that your Trezor will generate a list of words which you need to write down. This information is the most important part of securing your Trezor. It is the only offline backup of your Trezor and all wallets associated with it. You can't proceed unless you check all these boxes. And as the middle box says, never take a photo or make a digital copy of your backup. Especially don't make a video like I am unless you know what you're doing. Once you click begin backup, you head over to your device and you look at the words presented on the screen. Now the touch screen of the Trezor does take a little getting used to. However, if you swipe up, you should see the other list of words. I'm going to carefully write these words down in my stone book. And for those of you who don't know what a stone book is, it is a waterproof notebook designed for writing your backups and your passwords. This is also a good opportunity for me to show you guys how well the privacy screen works. Once the backup is complete, you have to press and hold on your device to continue. Now they're going to test you to see if you actually wrote down the words. In this case, it asks me which was the first word which was the 8th word and which was the 11th word in my backup. So now that I finished verifying my backup, I just want to remind you guys that once you have this backup safe and secure, you can use this to restore your treasure at any point in time. But basically now it's saying that I need to set a pin for my device. So once I click continue and set pin, it's going to prompt me on my device to select the numbers that I want for my pin. Now I would always recommend you choose a strong and secure pin, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to create a simple one, which is one, two, three, four, and I'm going to have to confirm it a second time. And once that is done, I simply press continue and my device is finished set up. Now this list shows all of the native cryptocurrency assets that your Trezor device supports. The list does look small, but bear in mind that it not only supports Ethereum, but all ERC20 tokens. One other thing to consider is that if your favorite cryptocurrency project is not listed here, then chances are, if that cryptocurrency has a web wallet, then your Trezor should be able to connect with the web wallet. 
So in essence, it will still work with your Trezor device. Now when I scroll down, here are some more advanced features, but I'll leave them out for now. Before I complete my setup, however, I'm going to select Litecoin and Ethereum for my Trezor wallet and now click complete setup. So my device is up and ready and working. At this stage, I can edit its name. I can change it from the simple My Trezor to Caribbean Crypto Tips. However, there does seem to be a word size limit. So I have to take off the last word and edit name. And of course, any changes made must be confirmed on the device. So now I can go ahead and select Access Wallet. Now I have an option between a standard wallet and a hidden wallet. In this case, the standard one is just pin protected. The hidden wallet is one where you have to create a separate passphrase. As my coins load, this is what the interface should look like. And in my opinion, it's quite stylish and sleek. I would definitely give it a passing grade. Now if I scroll back to the top, I have the option to receive once I click the button. As you can see, these are my accounts. This is my Bitcoin account. I can always rename it. Now over here on the left, you can see my other cryptocurrency accounts. And if I want to see the full address, I just have to click that green button. And like everything else, I must confirm the address on my Trezor device. I love the large screen of the Trezor as it displays the entire address. One of the other cool security features about the Trezor is that each time you reveal an address, it creates a new cryptocurrency address for you. So you're not reusing the same old addresses. Now, if you want to add more cryptocurrency accounts, let me press the plus icon and activate more coins. And here you have the list that we saw earlier. These are the main coins. And if you are a developer, however, you have access to the testnet coins as well. So let me head over to the Exodus website. As I mentioned before, the company Exodus and Trezor have a unique partnership. Exodus by itself is a very clean and stylish software wallet that works for both desktop and mobile. And now with their partnership with Trezor, you can now manage your funds on your Trezor using the Exodus interface. It works with both Trezor 1 and the Trezor Model T. You can always watch this video to show you how to set up Exodus with your Trezor. However, it's just three simple steps. Get the Trezor, install a piece of software called the Trezor Bridge, and pair it with your Exodus. Now, if you are an existing Exodus user, here are some good reasons why you may want to do this setup. Not only do you have the peace of mind of having your assets safe and secure on your Trezor offline, but now you can use the Exodus interface to interact with the other assets which were not shown in the Trezor suite. And you can easily exchange these assets to and from your Trezor at any time. So let's go and click install the Trezor bridge. It says the Trezor tool is a new communication tool to facilitate the connection between Trezor and your browser. So I'm going to speed forward this installation process. Once it's done, I just log into my Exodus wallet. Now Exodus will automatically detect your Trezor. And if you have a hidden account, it will ask you to enter your passphrase. You can also opt to enter your passphrase on your Trezor device itself. But for most normal users, your experience should be like this. You plug in your Trezor, you click connect, and just like that, it will pair with your Exodus wallet. And now that it's done, you can see a full list of tokens that you can store on your Trezor device all being managed through your Exodus wallet. Now if you click on continue to portfolio, you'll be taken to the main dashboard where you'll see a pie chart showing you all of your funds. This account happens to be empty, but my main account has in some funds. The next thing I want to show you guys will be the wallet tab. Right now, only Bitcoin is added to my Trezor. So this is my Bitcoin wallet. I can click on receive where you can see my QR code and address to send funds. And if I want to go and add more tokens, I will click on add more. Now I can click on any of these to add them to my Trezor wallet. The ones with the Trezor symbol are those that are supported by the device. Now, if you see this particular symbol next to your token, that means you can transfer from your Exodus wallet directly to your Trezor device without any hassle whatsoever. Now this was just a quick overview showing you guys how to pay your Trezor hardware wallet with your Exodus software. I'm not going to make any transfers in this tutorial, but I invite you guys to watch my other Exodus video. 
Now let's head over to the official Trezor store, which is shop.trezor.io. Here is where we would have purchased my Trezor Model T. I just want to show you guys that they have other things to offer, such as steel backup solutions. And you can also purchase the Trezor Model 1, which is the more affordable, older version to the Trezor Model T. When you scroll down, you can see that there are other accessories and other products offered, such as the silicon cases. You have portable Type-C USB cables, as well as other cables and accessories. So remember, head over to the official Trezor store, shop.trezor.io, or you can use the affiliate link in my description below. So guys, this basically brings me to the end of today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, feel free to like, share, and comment below. Now this is by no means my last unboxing video so if you want to stay up to date with all of my videos remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification. If you guys want your own Trezor Model T hardware wallet or any other product that Trezor has to offer then I recommend you visit the Trezor store using my official link in the description below. That is a free way that you can help support my channel. Now this is Kevin from Caribbean Crypto Tips. I'll see you guys next time.